Welcome to the Kinjas Podcast. Here we will discuss dance, life, and whatever the f we want. Welcome to or welcome back to Kinjas Movement in the Shadows. We are your host, Ben. And I am Anthony. And we are stoked for our guest today. Today we have pro parkour and tricker athlete. He was the 2019 world champion. You've probably seen his many viral clips on Instagram and TikTok. We have a real life action figure in the pod. We have Bailey Bagels Payne. What's poppin'? What is poppin'? I'm ready. What's poppin' is my back. What's poppin' is your back. What's (laughs) up with your back? Uh, no, nah, no, nah, it's just more of a joke, but yeah, no, it always cracks every morning. Okay. Yeah, every just afternoon. a joke, man. You didn't get right. When you're in the I, industry, you I just thought it was for real. It. This guy does crazy stuff. <laughs> hey, I had a bagel this morning. I just wanted to share. Hey, that. big shout out though. Big, big shout, shout out. out. <laughs> well, what is the name? What's the origins of bagel? Uh, long story short, uh, YouTube video I filmed in like 2009. Group of friends were sitting in a room, kind of like this, but we're like coming up with YouTube ideas and the video idea was us coming up with an idea in a room and as someone was describing an idea, it went through like six different genres of like romantic, action, scary. And then like by the time we got to the seventh person, someone actually walked in the house and this was not staged at all. And they, they were like, oh, we have pizza bites, or like the bagel bites. Oh yeah. Love, and I was I the only one who bites. didn't like them at the time and they were making fun of me for it. So you don't like bagel bites? bagel bites? And then, well, I, they're all right now, but... <laughs> Yeah, that, that's pretty much. <laughs> now that you've kind of branded yourself that way, yeah. Yeah, literally from a pizza bite thing to now like a morning breakfast meal. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how I got the name. People think it's something so crazy and bizarre. It's not. It's a simple story. You know like what? That. I think most nickname origin stories are kind of lame and very anticlimactic like that. So it I is. understand, <laughs> man. I don't even have a cool AK. I'm just Anthony Lee. That I, no, I, you do have AKs. You just don't claim them. Yeah. <laughs> you don't identify with them. First of all, that's. Is that even cool? Is that even a compliment? I don't even. That's like. Yeah. I, I mean, hey, people call you things, and you just. Hey, this you, isn't about me. Let's focus. Let's focus. Okay, on yeah, that. yeah. You're right. You're right. Uh, but bagels, dude. Thank yeah. you for hopping in the pod, man. Uh, we met via social media, yes, you know, sir. and um, you're into uh, doing crazy things with your body and and uh, NFTs, apparently. Yeah, NFT. <laughs> I, I just like. I like. I guess the best way to put it is like, pun intended. I like staking my life. Okay, I like that. That's a good pun. Yeah, Yeah, that's a great one. So, with like the sport I grew up in, there's literally it costs no money to start at all. There's no like equipment you need to buy. No, like every sport you could think of, there's something you need. You don't even really need clothes. I'm not saying go do it without (laughs) clothes, but yeah, you see what I'm saying? It's not like a cost efficient sport, you know, to like make a living from. So, my goal was to kind of like try to make a giant living or not even giant, just make a simple living off what I was doing. So I kind of ventured off into like doing that and it kind of like molded into something I was doing full time now without even knowing. Mm-hmm. Let's so let's hold right there yeah. and let's take it back like 10 more paces. Let's I know, go to, my ADHD sidetrack. No, 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 good. Good. Let's good. go to the let's go to the origins yeah. like where that really came to be and how you got there because I think, you know, we've been able to see even through your social media and all that stuff how phenomenal the journeys become but really understanding like where it came from is is one of the best parts of a story yeah so i'm from south carolina irmo like right in the middle of columbia to be exact so like middle of nowhere i moved out here four and a half years ago to la so i've been here like four and a half years now and i originally came here uh with my brother in the rv bus that we bought because we would do tours around america some europe some parts of australia like coaching kids how to flip we did that for like two and a half, three months in the summer for like four or five years, I think. And then after that, we were like, all right, let's end it in LA on this final tour. We made it cross country, boom, stayed. He went back like two years ago. So I'm the only one who actually stayed. So it's been, it's been definitely crazy. Cause like, I'm well, talking about touring already. I mean, what you, I think you're skipping the step to touring with yeah, what? So, I mean, so, you, so you have a gymnastics background? Yeah, well, no, not gymnastics. All star cheerleading, cheerleading, which is like the 2019 thing. You said I was a champion. It was the world cheerleading championship which is in oh, orlando okay. y'all, if y'all know anything with dance they had the dance worlds there too yeah, yeah i'm familiar mm-hmm. with the, the cheerleading yeah. championship that stuff's crazy yeah man. so that just ended last weekend actually i haven't even done it since 2019 so before that i cheered probably 10 years in south carolina and i'm stayed with this gym that i love the gym the people the facility but if you actually care about the sport like the teams weren't the best but my brother and i didn't care about being on like the best team we we're like oh it's a gym you know we can utilize this to get better and stuff 
But to go back before that, my bad. Uh, yeah. We we were like the only guys who were cheering in South Carolina at that time when we were younger. When I started, I was like 10, he was nine. And I actually joined when I was 12. So the only reason I joined is because they said we could come use the gym for free if we were, you know, cheerleaders on yeah. the team. And they were like, all right, exchange being a guy cheerleader, potentially getting made fun of in high school, you know, but whatever, in middle school. And, and it was just worth it at the time because you just desperately he, wanted to train and trick? Well, we had a babysitter. She was teaching us how to flip at home, but like she was just getting bored. It wasn't out of like, oh yeah, I want to make them get good. It was like, she's bored of just watching us. So she just made us start doing it. So like, here, try this. Yeah, because yeah. she was a cheerleader. Oh, okay. Oh. So then long story short, yeah, that's kind wow. of like how that came to be. Happy accident, I would say. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I think the, the the leap though, even from, uh, no pun intended, um, the, from cheerleading to gymnastics to parkour tricking, because that's a, when I... I mean, I, I obviously I see the 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 bridge there, but I mean, I don't know how you practice jumping from a building to a building. Hey, let me just practice that. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so when I was doing cheerleading, there was always like a unclaimed title of like doing parkour without even knowing you're doing parkour. You know, mm. like anyone who's like, like climbing over a ledge, like even now, if you were to do like hop over a wall, it's parkour technically you know you're sick i could do parkour yeah yeah it's, 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 a, it's the most simple <laughs> run away from it's people. the most simple thing you don't gotta jump buildings for yeah, it to be parkour okay, okay. people just like in modern society when they think of parkour they think of the office or people jumping buildings i do sure. think of the office it's literally lying. there's no in <laughs> between there's literally the highest or the lowest medium you know yeah it's it's actually not good but it is what it is you know whatever but long story short i went from cheerleading to tricking to parkour now Got and it. free running. I do parkour uh -huh. and free running kind of simultaneously. What's the difference between free running and parkour? So parkour is getting point A to point B the most efficient way possible. And uh, free running is the most creative way possible. Uh, so Whoa. you got to add that, add the sauce. Add, add the, the sauce. Yeah, add okay. a flip. Add some spin. Add mm -hmm. some flow, some flare, some grabs, you know. Who, did you have anybody that was kind of a mentor in that space for you? Or was that just yeah, a community? babysitter, dude. Oh, your babysitter. No, 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 no. <laughs> for tricking, yeah. This guy named Michael Guthrie. He's the best in the world. Okay. He's from Kansas. And he just, hands down, like, pretty much every movement industry knows who he is. Mm. That's how, like, I've heard, I've heard how refined well, yeah. he is mm -hmm. in this. It's like, he's untouchable. Still, it's yeah. crazy. And then there's this new upcoming kid who's like, everyone's like, he's the best. Now his name's Shose. He's from Japan he's unbelievable he's doing stuff that even this other guy can't do right but it's not the like the most exact clean perfect textbook like mm -hmm, this other guy mm -hmm. he can do like a to y everything exactly perfect mm -hmm. not z but this kid can do a to z but make on a 40 percent looking scale first a 99 percent look i really scale. love how like super meta and like super technical you're talking um because, yeah. because i do feel like i kind of understand even though i don't understand uh the craft or i don't participate myself or yeah, actually yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I am a professional parkour <laughs> um but but for for anybody who's listening that doesn't fully understand you know what i mean the depth of like when you say things like a to y 40 percent, this and that yeah like give us give us a little bit more layman's terminology so like Another way to describe is he he's just you have people who do something and then you have people who can like perfect something in mm -hmm. a sense. You yeah. know, he's the discipline he grew up with martial arts from his parents and shit like that's made him like predominantly everything's laser focused, sharp, sharp, sharp versus this other kid who just grew up and actually in like a break dancing community, but not heavily martial arts based which the martial arts guys are already like totally understand you know, it's like it's like watching uh, uh somebody in gymnastics do flares versus watching somebody exactly. in the b-boy community right. do flares, yeah, yeah, right? pretty much. one is uh visibly like uh perfected in a yes. certain way that gymnastics perfection of lines mm -hmm. and like flow and stuff like that but the rawness and the swag and, and even the origins mm. of certain things are, are give a totally different culture yeah but even this guy guthrie he's hitting the raw but like hit it he's making perfect look not like there's something better than perfect it's crazy right ah. it's like he just pulls it off the execution so well that, that's it's, interesting when you say there's something that's better than perfect because i think even just Ant touched on it when something is has a little bit of an edge or rough around the edges but it just 
evokes a feeling where it's just like i don't know what that was but that made me feel something where you call it swag you call it sauce yeah. or, or style right and that's what kind of makes hip-hop culture this unique uh way of expression right because there's no necessarily um one way to do something is if you can do that but in your own way and then you kind of just make people be like whoa i've never seen that done that way that makes me feel or, or sometimes mm-hmm. when we like judge a dance competition right it's like yes that team technically could win first place because they were cleaner mm-hmm. technically and xyz but that other show was unforgettable right right and, yeah. and that left me with something that i want to go do you know what i mean yeah. so it's like i i can understand the depth of that even in other yeah, crafts yeah. Yeah. So that's probably what this other kid has kind of has that that x factor well, forget just, these other kids yeah. man let's talk about yeah. let's talk about bagels <laughs> so what you want to know about me now yeah. <laughs> for example like um let's see have you do you have signature moves uh yeah i had the world record for a cork for like eight years all right how many is that 28 28 corks in a row yeah how many did you do when you was a little uzi vert what was it uh or uh, oh uh asap ferg oh asap uh, ferg that's what uh, that was. was only like five to knee but i was i was drinking that whole day i didn't expect to even go on the <laughs> stage bro i was just oh, there dang. for a re- that's a whole separate thing so how did that how did he even you want to drink right audience? now uh, if you want, I would. I wouldn't say no, but yeah. So pretty much, long story short, I was there for a Red Bull athlete summit. There's like 100 best athletes of Red Bull. We're all together in mm-hmm. one area in Austin, Texas, and they had us at Willie Nelson's ranch for like a few days, time like trying all types of stuff. They even brought us to like Kelly Slater's uh man-made wave pool. Oh, you sick. know what I'm talking about? It makes yeah, like a wave. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh-huh. super tight, but. Then they took us to ACL, the festival after. I've never been... Well, no, that was my second music festival ever, so I didn't know what to expect at all. So I decided to stay with my skating homies, you know, because I feel like they have the best taste in music. <laughs> I was like, these guys are going to know what to do. So I, I just stayed with them. They took us to ASAP Ferg, and the other half of the group went to the Red Bull VIP section. So it was like, do I want to go watch the end of ASAP thing or go to the VIP or Red Bull and network? I was like... Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with them for a little bit because I was networking all weekend. And then right. next thing you know, like not even five minutes in, I was just in a mosh pit, did a couple flips, and then just... He just brought it, you up on stage. Yeah, was, it was literally that quick. That's a couple crazy. shots and then boom, next go. thing That's you know. That's how it works. Yeah. And we're going to take a quick break right there. Let's go get some drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a word from our sponsor. So... um you were talking about so you're there like with Red Bull folks. Were you were you like working with Red Bull? How did you get uh, linked with that whole camp? Are you still working with Red Bull? So I was uh quote unquote the only tricking athlete ever signed with them for the sport of tricking, male or female. And that was for five years. So I can't remember what the last year was. I believe it was three years ago. And it was the year I got out of high school. I or no, senior year of high school, I got it. So you were signed when you were like fucking 13 years old no 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 senior in high school so oh, senior 18 high. oh okay yeah because okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. they, they it's very hard for them to like find someone in a sport that's around my age like 18 at the time and then sign them. they like finding people like younger in their prime yeah so they will get people older but like they really want to find the people who are like hitting prime totally. prime so that's what kind of when they got me so i did that with them for like like i said five years and it was sick they took me to a bunch of cool places uh I wouldn't say there was ever a downside with them. A lot, just, a lot yeah, of cool yeah. people. You they just found you them. via social media or YouTube or. Yeah. So like my whole thing, like with the tricking was once I converted away from cheer into tricking more full time, I was like, this is dope. I didn't think I was going to make money out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was just, I go do my, do my cheerleading competitions. Right. And then after my brother and I, or mainly me would just go trick and make money, like literally put a hat out and do tricks outside the competition when everyone's like scared they're gonna like like oh, street performance my... style yeah 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 oh, like in between cheer competitions so we go uh, compete yeah, get off yeah, stage yeah. and i would keep going outside on the concrete but all the coaches like oh don't risk getting hurt blah 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 i'm like well this is how i'm gonna make my money if if y'all want to pay for my hotels you already let me just be at the gym for free but you're not covering travel or anything mm-hmm. so if you do that then i won't risk getting hurt so they didn't listen so because of that i grew up literally training all my hardest skills pretty much outside on the hard ground Mm. and like Mm. in cheer more than two spins is illegal and at like 16 i was doing quads which is four spins on the ground (laughs) and the coaches would just get mad because they're like 
oh, you need to just practice what the the skills you need for the routine are. I'm like, why would I limit? You literally just told me limit myself. Yeah. Wow. Because the industry rules are written that way. What if I were that person who wrote the rules and I'm like, it's mandatory to do five spins. Right. All y'all are scared to do more than one. Y'all, even half the people on the team are scared to spin. Even half a spin. So I'm like, why are you complaining that I'm literally trying to go above and beyond? I never understood, so I just kept doing it. And then yeah. even when I discovered tricking, that was even better because then I learned I could go off one foot. So all of these people in the gym are complaining they can't get their skills, like double fulls and shit, off two feet. I'm like, I'll literally go do it off one foot for you right now. I've never even tried. And then literally just years and years of just loving the new adaptations to it just made me love the sport. Mm. And the people are way cooler. In tricking? Well, at least they used to be. <laughs> yeah, they were cooler. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. What do you feel like, because um, obviously to get that kind of skill, that's that's a very, very crazy skill. You know what I mean? To be yeah. able to, when you're saying like national rules or regulations and cheers, like two feet and two spins, and you're out here doing like quads off of one foot. Like it's, it's a very intense thing. What do you feel like was your kind of, um, I almost want to say like superpower in how you got to that spot? You know, like what? What is, is it? Your work oh, ethic? Is it just your like your addiction to to staking your life? You know, what yeah. I mean? like, what is? I it? mean, you kind of summed it up with that. I would. I mean, honestly, what you said that plus like I can get small motivation out of nowhere from like anything really. Like mm. I feel like that's what my ADHD blessing is, mm-hmm. as I can kickstart like an energy boost whenever I need. Even if I'm feeling like really tired and down, I'm like, oh no no no, boom. I don't even have to have a thought. I can just get into that that zone, you know, and just fire myself up immediately. I don't even need music. That's where I got into that point where I can be alone too. Yeah. And I can do a world's first trick right now by myself without music because I got to that point of firing myself up. So there's not even the fear of getting hurt. That no, always, you back. always. Oh, always. always. Yeah, always I fractured there. this ankle like two months ago. Uh, oh, this dang. me, I, I have two screws in it. As you can see that line two years ago, I ruptured my AC on tour, both meniscus in a competition in Amsterdam. And yeah, just have like random, like things like this that keep just like slipping up in the path. Right. But I always bounce back from it. That's why I tell everyone. So, I mean, normally when stuff like that happens, that will deter you from continuing to do the thing that made that happen. Yeah, exactly. So, so how like, you, how do you bounce back after having gone through these painful surgeries and yeah. all that? So like a lot of stuff growing up, like it's as dumb as it sounds, like when you're young, it's not even dumb actually this part. Your brain gets programmed to think a certain way when you're raised a certain way. Mm. It's just all psychology. So the psychology of me growing up with my mom telling me that I can't do certain things when I wanted to, I would do it. So the amount of people in my industry who got the same injury saying, oh, you won't be able to do a, this type of trick anymore, or this, I'm saying, shut up. And I just do it. And now you're, I'm you're just done. seeing your mom on their, on their neck. And you're like, nah, dude, I'm going to do this. No, it's just, I kind of universally <laughs> connect it all. I'm just kind of like, I just kind of shut their opinions out. You know, I'm like, it, that's exactly why it's your opinion. That's why your negative thoughts hurt you. That ain't going to hurt me. Wow, so, I, I definitely see the truth in that. Even you know, from we d- we didn't have supportive parents in in pursuing dance. You know, oh, um, word, yeah. before dance, it was skateboarding for me. My mom hated the fact that I skateboarded, and I would like do tricks off of like I mean, at the time, like four or five staircase. Yeah, you know, tricks. So <laughs> like, yo, that's pretty crazy. And I've gotten my my share of injuries, but kind of I guess like what you're saying, it didn't keep me from continuing to skateboard. Yeah. I was like, nah, I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna land this trick. And then fast forward into things like dance and stuff like that. I guess whenever there is some sort of opposition, I mean, it can go both ways. It could either be like, yeah, you're right. I I won't do it. Or like, you know what? I'm going to prove you wrong. And that's actually my motivator to kind of to to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like the proving people wrong aspect. Majority of it. Because then it also like proves to myself that I was able to do it. You know? Yeah. I just use a little different mindset to make it work. Speaking of proving to yourself, uh, out of like the entire journey so far, whether it be, you know, tricking or whatever, like what was one moment or one uh, accomplishment or one place that you were at where you felt that like out of everything that you had done, you had proven something to yourself with what you could do? That can go two different ways. I G- got give two me different both. Answers. Give me both. So in terms of danger, the years I've trained what quote unquote people say for free has led to me getting certain things along the way that I can capitalize off of, you know? 
So one of the biggest videos that I ever cashed out on was me getting hit by a car like a few years ago. The, we saw yeah, that we earlier saw that video. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people think that's like fake and shit. I'm like, it's not fake. Like I have a hundred angles. I don't even have a scar on my leg anymore. Actually, I didn't break anything either. The only thing I came out with was a really bruised leg for a week, maybe. That was the impact of the car. Yeah, yeah, from the head. Yeah, because you rolled out of that thing. You're like, I'm yeah. yeah. So like <laughs> I did, obviously people were like, did you plan on doing that? I'm like, you're an idiot. Why would I want to get hit by a car? <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> round off, backflip, stall, let it go under me, and that's it, right? So all I did was time it twice, two timers on the third time, as like I would say. And then he was just going a little too fast, and I was just going a little too fast on my end. So it messed up, right? But with me having all the 15 years of flipping prior, it's literally like instinctively saved my life. Like I knew like the second I did the takeoff, in my head, I'm landing it, right? There's no way I was failing. But then I got hit. What do you do in literally a blink of an eye of hitting the ground and you got hit and your body's doing this? You got to adapt. So literally like time froze in my head. I was able to spot everywhere I was. And then I just, why I perfectly rolled out with my hands here, rolled over my wrist and it hit my head or anything. Literally just instinct. Wow. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> is it, anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, you need to go YouTube this right now. Literally type in bagels, pain, and it'll be one of the first videos you, you gotta see. You got to Google hit by car. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, first, the first thing. First search crazy. result. Yeah, that, that's oh like gosh. one of my yeah, biggest videos probably ever. That's insane, man. Well, so, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we were just kind of doing a deep dive on just like some of the crazy stuff that you've done. And so obviously that takes a lot of uh, training. It takes a lot of discipline. Can you walk us through a little bit of like what that side of, because I, I I mean, you were even talking, but you're like, yeah, I'm going to go train after this anyway. I'm yeah. good. And, you know, we, we've been talking and like, you, you know, we've been trying to schedule things. So you keep bringing up training. So what's what's like a day in the life? um of bagels look like in terms of training discipline is there like a diet element that like adds to yeah. the whole thing you know like walk us through that yeah so i mean i wouldn't say like my life diet is a standard professional athlete definitely not 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 the things i consume not the things i do they're definitely not aligned to be like a prime like olympic athlete type thing you know like these people are literally like on certain sleep schedules they're on eat this amount a day track this track that i don't track anything <laughs> i don't track. i the only thing i track is the amount of videos i film a day because that's what matters mm -hmm. i get at least four to five clips a day four yeah. to five wow. clips yeah, a day easy easy and if it's like a day i'm feeling really good i can get 10 Jeez. and these are all individual clips i can use on tiktok instagram uh spotlight on my snapchat Facebook reels. And then I also have all those used for a YouTube video. So I make a YouTube video pretty much every day. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and then I only upload three a week. So t tell us about that. Like I, you know, after like looking into some of your videos and stuff like that, you do a, a really amazing job, by the way, talking about like content creation and like, uh, I totally vibe with you when I, I think I watched one of your videos and you were talking about how this time frame also is an era in which like we need to capitalize and utilize social media and the power of it um, because of one, the, the leverage that our generation has at, in this kind of like new tech social media era. And yeah. also because of like what it actually will provide for us in like a forward thinking future. You know what I mean? You do a really, really great job. Um, not only like articulating about <clears throat> it, but also following through with it. Obviously I like, literally, I was just talking to these. I was like, do this full one YouTube one day ago, three days ago, four days ago, six days ago. Like you're just <laughs> uploading content all the time. And it's not even just like little tricks. It's like eight, 15 minute vlogs and stuff. And I'm like, this fool is on his content creation. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of blow your mind with it. So I do, <laughs> I edit everything on my phone and film all everything on my phone on splice. If you ever heard of that. Yeah. App. yeah. We, we so like splice. all the YouTubers <laughs> I film with, they have like 15, 20 people on their production teams, etc. I'm literally doing everything alone. Thumbnails, video, concepts, you name it. If you can, that's the way to go. Well, yeah, that's but... what I like. I like improvising and spontaneously doing stuff. So like I tell most people, I don't plan my videos. They just kind of happen on the spot. I could film one at night. I don't know. It all literally depends on like what sparks in the moment of what mm. I'm doing. And most of the time, it's really easy for me to think of a concept to come off something, you know, not it won't really take like a long time. Like most of my friends, they take probably four or five hours to film a video. That's gonna come out to be 15, 16 minutes. Yeah. And you're just ready to go at a moment. So you don't yeah, have to warm up, stretch. You can just find inspiration and just yeah, do Yeah, I like just a... like going and talking. That's why I like podcasts, because you're like, you don't just sit there to plan your things out. You just kind of 
flow off the top and it goes, mm. you know. And then that's when you get the more real authentic shit, I feel like. Versus, oh, I had to stage this, I had to plan this, I had to hit this line right. Like, no, it's flow off the top. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why we love it too. That's why we're doing this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're doing this. Dude, that's crazy, man. So, um, okay, so yeah, you see, you don't treat yourself like a whatever the whatever the standard traditional athlete is. I'm using my air quotes right now because I mean, yeah, I think yeah. everybody, everybody has a very different way that they approach um, you know, yeah, like the the food that they eat, how much sleep they get, and and whatever it is. But the way that you're you're even talking about, um, yeah, being able to crank out minimum four to five videos a day, um, and and like there is a discipline there, though. You know what I mean? You don't just like like oh, I don't know. I just it just so happened to do it. Like that may be even a, on a subconscious level. Like that, those are my goals. Like I'm I'm not not cranking out at least this much yeah. so even from you know um whether that's driven by uh just your you know love for your craft or you treating this as like this is my business it's like i'm my own business and in order for me to uh you know build this thing to make it successful here's like the minimum things required in order for like you know me as a brand as a business or whatever you want to call yourself um, so there's like this, like the entrepreneurial mind that you have. I mean, earlier we were talking about NFTs and investing yeah. and things like that. So there's, you have this, you have this brain in a, in a, in a way of thinking that um, whether you think you're a routine oriented person or not, there are certain systems in place. Like as we, as you're talking about, I see them like, there is a system here. Yeah, 100%. You may not think of it like that. You're like, no, I'm on the fly. I, I kind of freestyle everything or whatever. But like, no, there is a system in there. So um, what are your thoughts towards that? I mean, do you agree, disagree? Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I'd say like I was mentioning earlier, uh, it's it's the, the perspective change of when I was younger to now has definitely helped form that and shape that to make me like be able to do that. Like, for example, like my parents being divorced. I feel like that could be something I utilize like to help me, you know, not give up on my day to day stuff, something along like Whoa. those lines or mm -hmm. whether if it's uh, knowing that I was the first Red Bull athlete to get signed, I can get signed by another company potentially because I have that under my belt, even though I don't really care to right at this point in my mm -hmm. life anymore. If it happened, I still could depending if the numbers are right, but that's not like the drive now, you know, so things change like perspective wise over time, but I'd say past experiences definitely can help shape and mold the reason my mindset is what it is. Right. For sure. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Mm. Dude. So, I mean, uh, you know, you're not um, a stranger to taking risks, right? I mean, you put your life on the, your, your physical life on the line. Um, so as far as, you know, you're a young guy, you, you, you're, you just recently turned 26. Yep. Yep. A few days ago. Happy birthday. And um, as you kind of, you know, move through, you, you said you've been out here for a few years. Uh, we all got through a crazy pandemic. And, you know, we're talking about, you know, um, gyms and businesses and things like that, closing, shutting down, opening up. So where is your sort of focus in terms of where you see yourself now? What are, What's motivating you? Like what what's like a current goal that you currently are trying to like, this is my next thing that I'm going for? Uh, well. I'll just start with the easy one in terms of like my industry with skills. There's just a uh, one trick that I'm trying to do on this shipping container that I've been making a bunch of like pretty viral videos. Oh, the one at UCLA. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like uh, it's a trick called a full and back out. So it's a double backflip, but the first one's a spin in it. So you spin backflip, then another flip. So you spin backflip, do you land yes. and then another flip? No, it's backflip with a spin at once in the air and then you do another one after at once in the air. So it's a double flip. So like pretty much the skills I've been taking outside like on concrete or shipping crates or like what gymnasts compete in the Olympics with, but they're on a spring floor. Yeah. So like this just shows like they're so dedicated to get their craft perfect. But for just the Olympics, like is that all you go to? I like to take what they're doing and be like, yo, you don't have to limit yourself like I was in cheer. Take this shit outside, you know? You don't even have to stay in the gym. They're like, oh, most of the people's excuses, they want to save their bones. Completely fine. You can do that. But I prefer to just, you know, take risk. Like you, like I was telling you earlier, like risk everything. Before I moved out here, I sold solar door-to-door -door for a year. when I, And that was like a job I didn't even know if I would like 
even do anything with, right? But South Carolina that year, uh, they were giving huge tax credits back to people who went solar. And I would look for homes that qualified for solar to get on the roof for free. They just mm-hmm. paid the new reduced bill that we had. So all I would do is just go find homes who would qualify. And I literally went door to door. Literally had from guns sent to me, dog chase out to me to like, <laughs> oh, come in. Literally have experienced all types of humans. You couldn't not honestly believe it. <laughs> South Carolina's got weird people. Uh-huh. But yeah, long story short, a combination of that and traveling the world with tricking, you know, outside of the solar stuff, like it's... It I definitely made me who I am today for sure. Yeah. With the terms of like meeting people and not being so self conscious to certain things, you know, a lot of people are scared to like speak what they really want to say or like they're scared to act how they really want to act. But for what reason? Yeah. You go travel and get uh uncultured a little, and then you know, then you'll wake up. That's what I tell people. Totally. Too many people just stay in their state or Miami, LA, New York. Like get the hell out. Go like go see the world. Literally go hit Asia, go hit Europe, go hit everywhere. Yeah. And then you'll wake up. That's definitely. what I tell I, I definitely co signed to that. The second you even go somewhere truly as a culture shock is is the second it changes even the way you see your home. You know what Ex- I mean? And that's another huge reason I'm like why well, I don't freaking give up what I'm doing today. I'm like, dude, we have it so good here. Like, what is there to complain about? Yeah. What do you yeah. what option do you have to fail? People in Africa training, doing super hard stuff flipping wise on the ground and they're still uploading on instagram how Mm -hmm. like how they got a phone out there they managed to do it there's people out here saying they can't make content i'm like (laughs) okay (laughs) okay that's why he was just on world star right and he's in literally the west ivory coast (laughs) so like so crazy obviously you know we we are are dancers as well and and physical movers and stuff but we've you know, been in the game for a little bit longer. And so there's kind of like this physical mortality that, you know, we've had to uh, reconcile with the, the older you get, right? Obviously, you know, you see it in basketball players, football players. The second you get to a certain age, you might have all this title, you might have all these these credits and things that you have done in your legacy, but you're not the 20 year old kid who's coming in, you yeah. know, and moves fresh. 100. Like w- for tricking, it's, you know, again, I, it seems more intense. <laughs> like what you do, the way you're doing stuff, the way you're using your body, the places that you're doing, the injuries that you're accruing. We're out here trying to do tuts and stuff like that. You know, you're like yeah. talking about screws in your legs. Like, <laughs> you know, and, and again, happy birthday. You know, you just turned 26. But like, what does that look and feel like for you? Do you think about that? Are you feeling it already? You talked about your prime, you know, or a time yeah. that Red Bull looks for younger days. Like what? Where is that for you? And then what's next after that? Or like, how do you see what you're going to do with it? So in tricking, there's like, I've done every skill I've wanted to do and more when it came to tricking, right? Yeah. And when I, I when I had my knee injury from tricking, I showed the doctor a clip and he was showing me like, all right, if you keep landing on those certain a- angles and axes with the spins and the kicks, that's when your ACL goes out. Then I show him what parkour was, where it's just literally plyo jump strides stuff like that he's like oh well that's not gonna hurt your knee it's actually gonna rehab it so when i heard that that's when i 180 the fucking switch and i went straight parkour and now i've literally done i've done even like i've only been doing it for three years now i've done like world's first in the sport for parkour well for free running because you have to involve flips with it what is is world's first so like i'm the first person in the world to do like do a certain trick in the field of free running parkour. So tricking is all flat ground, right? Uh, so imagine if I like, if this is a ledge and this is a ledge, I run, do a cork off this ledge and land here. That's free running. Uh, <clears throat> Cause there's a ledge to a ledge. It's not flat ground. Yeah. There's like a gap. There's like a wall to a wall. Sure. And there's yeah, a walkway yeah, yeah. in between. You flip off this, land that, but with the cork, tr- the, that skill. So like not many people are bringing it outside. So when I came out and like started doing more free running, I was doing that. I was doing double cork prees. I was trying even some triple cork prees, which no one's ever tried. No one's trying doubles. I was trying them with variations. So like just innovating the sport. That's where I yeah, see so myself. Yeah, so you're like fusing and bridging the, those Yeah, two exactly. And then uh, so many people in the industry are like very grateful for it because they, wow. they're like, oh, it's been stagnant for years. And we wish more people from that industry would come try this. I'm like, well, it's the same for y'all, dude. Y'all get up, stop jumping shit and come flip. Because every time I come to a session, all y'all want to do is jump. No one can flip. Same wow. vice versa. You're like, oh, y'all are only flipping. Come jump. I'm like, bro, it works both ways. Mm. Works both ways, so dog. So you're, you're innovating in the space right now. 
Yeah, exactly. And for like the that's, past that's crazy three four years. And, and in that sense, that'll give you a different kind of longevity that like other people may not be able to have. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, like in terms of like certain recognition and stuff, but more so like the capitalizing off it because you don't have to be the best in the sport to make the most. You know, Absolutely. same in dancing, mm-hmm. like. It is not at all that. Like, trust me, the top best people are making nothing. Oh, we know that, man. We've been, <laughs> we've been trying like, to win dance competitions on TV for a while. It hasn't worked, but we're still killing it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I feel you, bro. So yeah, that's pretty much like how I see like the industry going right now. And there's a lot of closed-minded people, right? But like, like a lot of people hated me when I got signed with Red Bull for tricking. A lot of people hated it. They're like... Oh, why are you giving this mainstream company the opportunity to take over and uh, destroy our sport? I'm like, you need to shut up and go re yourself. <laughs> I'm like, how are you going to tell me what I'm about to do with my business deal? Right. The fuck? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. people are really getting mad, angry, and aggressive too. And I'm like, bro, y'all are tripping. What? Like, yeah. what? Yeah. And I got to give it up for, to, to Red Bull for what they've been able to for do sure. with niches and extreme mm-hmm. sports. And yeah, parkour, they're killing it. Like, yeah. their parkour and free running setup, or like, their athletes are on fire. Same with their the B boy, B girl culture. They yep. took that to a whole new level. You yeah. Know, you with, I'm with friends that. with uh, Nagin. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Nagin's yeah. Sick. Uh, yeah. He's Makes a real sense. one. He's a real <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. Nagin's dope. Powerful. Yeah. He's a funny one. Yeah. That's yeah. what he is. <laughs> So I mean, dude, I, I'm I'm really seeing um, you know, a side of you in terms of the way that you see your own life because you're you're paving your own journey and whether the the masses or the the majority of the thing that you're kind of associating with in terms of the community or the culture that you kind of like Yo, I, I subscribe to like, yeah, I'm a tricker, I'm a parkour. But if if the people who are of that community sort of give you pushback, you're not necessarily be like, oh damn, like Maybe I should listen to them. But you're like, no, this is my life. And this is the thing that I feel passionate about. So you have this ability to, um, you obviously, you you know the culture, you've been in it, you're innovating in this space, but you have this progressive um, mentality that I think that like I can see taking you very far. Um, we're talking about shelf life and all this other stuff in terms of physicality. Um, what are your thoughts and are you um, even thinking in terms of like, what is the next step? Like after I'm not jumping and tricking and, and parkour, like what, what what do I transition into? Is that even in your periphery or are you just kind of more so just in the moment right now? Uh, I mean, I'd say for the past, like ever since I was 18, I've been in the moment for everything. Like I didn't even expect to be in LA this long either. So like most of the, I don't know. It's a good one. Like a lot of people also too that came out here with, like I was telling you, I'm not even talking to them anymore. So like people are kind of like off on their own avenues, essentially for me, I don't see myself like most people in the industry when they retire, they go back and coach in the gym or Mm -hmm. spot kids how to flip. And (laughs) I'm not doing that again. I grew up coaching and doing all that. I went on tours doing all that. I'm not going to go back like a full circle. Mm -hmm. So what I would do and not even like (coughs) nothing that's like big for me, but opening a facility is like directly though for tricking is not profitable. You Mm. have to do it like jam the one, the value they rented out to Netflix, Hulu, Disney plus movie directors, like left and right for stunt choreography, et cetera. So you can't just be a one gym thing. You gotta be a universal gym. So that's what I've seen them doing up here that's been killing it. And recently, like, I had the privilege to partner up and do some investments with Travis, one of my homies, and get one in Atlanta. That's now Jam Atlanta. And that's going to be hopefully fully done by middle of June, supposedly. Mm-hmm. So that's, like, super, super tight for me on my on that end. And then outside of that, I mean, I was talking to you earlier, crypto and NFTs, that, that's something I don't have to use my knees or my ankles. I, <laughs> I go home and do this cut you know move a couple things and that's it that's something that i actually recently over the past few years was really intrigued with how can like everyone's asked me what are you gonna do with your body if you're like paralyzed well i could sit at home and make money how are you gonna do that amazon wholesale what are you gonna do like so i got introduced in nfts but thank god i've been into crypto since 2015 so you know matt stefanina yeah yeah I'm good friend with him for like a decade now. And he got it. He was with me in 2000. I've texted with him in 2016 talking about stuff. It's crazy, bro. Cause he just put one up on Twitter the other day, a screenshot of like our text. I was like, dang, bro, we really been talking about it that long. 
And mm. like just kind of seeing how things can slowly move like that just without using my body is awesome to me. Obviously, it's like some of the stuff that I funded it with was through flipping, but some of the YouTube, well, I'd say 85% of my profitable YouTube videos right now don't involve flips. Maybe even 90%. That's amazing. Very yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what? It, you seem to uh, be really hip to like uh, adaptable um, kind of trends and just understanding how to like take the variable of your life or your skill or where you're at every ingredient that you know creates what you are in that moment and then just figuring out how to play the board game that's presented to you and i think that that's a a very necessary skill that not everybody kind of acknowledges sometimes you know what i mean sometimes people get like lost or trapped in this mindset that you're like you know a, a, a game piece in a game and not thinking that the game changes but at the end of the day, it's like games change all the time and you being able to change how you play it is exactly what allows you to like move through. You know what I'm saying? So, so one, of my, one of my biggest things I could say off that piece was like, you're saying when the, the pieces move, the game changes. The year I got dropped by Red Bull was so unexpected. That, <clears throat> that just completely changed everything I did. Um, Tell us about that. Where to begin? <clears throat> so it was over a text to start with. I, was like, I don't it was even like care a high school if this is up. even out public. <laughs> it was over a text. I'm like, that's so unprofessional. Like, what the hell, dude? And for the amount of stuff I did for him, long story short, yeah, it was over a text, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe how they handled it, one, two. I didn't know what my next step was going to be because my biggest source at that time of income was Red Bull. Yeah. And then uh, with the Red Bull money that I got, I, I bought and flipped two houses with my brother when we were 17 and 18 in South Carolina. And then that's why I kind of thought I was going to go into real estate for a little bit and then got bored, went straight into solar for a year, door to door, got bored. I was like, all right, tour, went on tour for those three years. I'm like, all right, well, it's cool. It's not like, like it's profitable, but it's not like a long term thing. What's next? So I was like, if I go back to South Carolina, just do the same routine I'm doing. I'm literally going nowhere. It's a rat race. So I had to break the loop, got out of the rat race, went to LA. And I said, I'm not going back no matter what, even if I end up living by myself. Now I live by myself is the best fucking thing I ever did. Literally, last roommate was uh, Pasha the Boss. You've probably seen his videos on Instagram. He's the Red Bull's most viral athlete, pretty much, for Sick. parkour free running. And uh, yeah, we lived together. And then before that, I lived in this house with my brother and then my friend Z uh, in Brentwood. So aside from that, it was like three roommates, two one roommate alone. Like each year I saw as I progressed, I saw myself just more going to be alone yeah. eventually. Not in the bad case at all. Just I can work better like this. I feel like, you know, like especially living space wise. I always felt like even if my other friend was leaving stuff out and it was a mess and they left it on that on purpose, I felt like I, OCD, I had to clean it up or something. Mm -hmm. So now if I am already going out of my way to fix other people's shit, essentially, what would happen if I lived alone and there in, during the times I would go fix shit, I could focus on actually doing other good shit. Mm -hmm. And then that's where I've been the past two years. Now I live alone two years. It's freaking amazing. That's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah, I mean, you it, it's clear, dude, you have a, a very, um, yeah, as Anthony said, like a, a way to adapt to your situation, but that you also know the kind of life that you want to design for yourself, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you're like, okay, cool, uh, roommate's cool, but I've learned like doing the solo, you know, solo act is is better for me in terms of my life, so you get to be more productive in in other ways. And so, I mean, you know, even as I asked that question earlier about like, oh, yeah, you know, like what what do you have, you know, sort of like the next step that you plan to transition to? I think even for, you know, us as well, I don't think what once we started dancing, even when we started dancing professionally, right? Like, oh, wow, we get paid to dance. Like, that's cool. They didn't feel like it. it yeah. But like it's it, it, still for me. That insane. wasn't even planned. <laughs> it was like, I wonder if I could get paid for this. And it's like, wow, it works. And then you you just start rolling over into the next opportunity that kind of presents itself. But you're already kind of preparing and priming yourself to be ready to receive whatever that next thing is because you were already, you already had momentum coming from one thing, going to the next, going to the next. So, you know, even just kind of, yeah, the way that you 
um, you know, say, yeah, I like to just kind of wing it freestyle, but I, I, I'm always like knocking out four to five pieces a day, maybe 10. And you have this, you know, discipline enough for you to know, like, yeah, I know how to get myself to be able to produce that much. That's already momentum that you're creating for yourself. And then you already talking about, yeah, it's important to surround yourself with like minded people, people <coughs> who will feed and encourage and fire you up and motivate and push you to continue to go down the route that you're already on that you want to stay on. And then you'll naturally kind of like, you know, weed out the ones who don't encourage that. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, man, it's just cool to even um, see somebody, you know, not not to say that you're, you know, a kid or anything like that. You're, you're obviously like doing your thing, but like um, myself, I'm 40, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, Damn, no this, kid, this kid has it all together, you know what I mean? Or no he's way. 140. He was Bro, born in 1800. <laughs> Oh, thank you. What? Thank you. Asian don't raisin. Asian don't raisin. <laughs> Until yeah. we're like 60 and then we're just yeah. fucking then it's dust, Mr. dude. Mr. We're Mr. just Miyagi overnight, farting dude. dust. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi overnight. But no, I mean, like my point is this, is that, you know, you you already on, you're already on a path and you're, you're already having this mindset like, yeah, man, I, that's why I'm like looking at, you know, ways to invest my money, park it here, invest it there so that it's all like, it's all there. You may not even like, like here's here here's my yeah. my my plan my master plan but it's all kind of there already I, I can see it yeah i'm trying to just get everything lined up you know because if ever anything ever did go wrong i could pull the trigger and then kind of be fine you know just how because like of what i've set myself up in the past with some accidentally some on purpose mm -hmm. and yeah i wouldn't change honestly anything of what i've done up to this point for even the knee injury that taught me so much yeah. just alone. So. Yeah. so what's what's next, man? Like what's kind of a, like if you have like a goal that's kind of like I'm trying to do this right now. What, what is Small that? or big. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was just talking to you earlier about the one that jam I'm opening uh, in yeah. Atlanta with mm -hmm. my Travis Jam Lana. That's like one step of somewhere I'm trying to look going in towards, you know, but I don't know. Honestly, a lot of this stuff is just very random. Like I'd say maybe heavily NFT inspired, especially things with good utility. Like the NFTs that I have currently, I, I just want to see them pretty much do what they say they're going to do, yeah. you know, with their roadmaps. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, a lot of the moves that I've played out so far, are like they're going to work out perfectly fine, especially with the industry. I mean, cause like I'm, very heavily into twitch and gaming mm -hmm. so like a lot of these are very play to earn aspect mm -hmm. so if i can kind of like have a system going on while i do all my streaming and stuff i think it could be very good for me mm -hmm. you know and obviously it's not like hey do what i'm doing this is like my financial advice no it's like yo i'm playing my freaking game like i'm staking stuff on my own don't do that right. but that's amazing uh to read between not even between the lines but for the sake of it like what's so dope about that and inspiring especially for any listeners who are out there you know what i mean it's like on the one hand you're doing like world's first championship fucking flipping red bull blah blah, blah. <laughs> your your body's going crazy on the other hand you've got game plans where you are, are like if i don't use my body at all there's different kinds of game plans and i think that's what every you know marginally successful person needs to do nowadays they can't put all their eggs in the one basket and it's not about baskets like career it's it's about like baskets of, of joy and passion you know what i mean I when you know. like are into something you're like i'm gonna do it and even when you talk about like i don't really know what's gonna go on everything's kind of random it's like you already know what you love and you already know how you're gonna fuck with what you love mm -hmm. so it's like almost guaranteed something's gonna work out even if it doesn't work out to the plan you know what i'm saying yeah so, so I see that and I'm like, that's something that everybody, I, I firmly believe in that too, should be thinking about. Even if you're like, even for us, you know, as like dancers and stuff, for any dancers that are listening, if your whole game plan is to dance your way through life, it's not bad. But to know that you have multiple <laughs> things, you know what I mean? That, yeah. that you can like fall on, whether you're interested or you're injured or whatever life presents at you, I think it's super, super important for people to, and it's not even diversifying your portfolio. It's listening to what you're into and just mm -hmm. going for it without mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. difference. You don't have to do it because you have to do it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. doing it because you're like, you believe you can and the options are available for you. Yeah, I like doing things that really suit my, my personality and lifestyle. <laughs> me risking my my life with the most of the tricks i do whether it's jumping a building or not like i like risking things financially sometimes not the best thing but like i i like doing it you know yeah it's, same yeah. same kind of high you know what i mean yeah, yeah yeah it's the same kind of feeling you know mm -hmm. sometimes it's worse when it doesn't work out all the time but like 
at the end of the day, I take everything as like a learning experience yeah. for me. So it doesn't always have to be a win for me to see. Totally. Like a, a green at least. Yeah, here's mm -hmm. a fun analogy um, for anybody who like really, really knows like uh, my dance interests as well. When I first started dancing, I, I first got into breaking and b-boying as well. Um, but obviously 99% of my actual career and what gave me everything that I have has been through, you know, things like choreography based stuff, right? Creating choreography, chore choreography for artists, doing shows and whatnot, right? But if I didn't have to dance for money, if I had to take, you know, like didn't have to worry about career, image, job security, any of that at all, I feel like my natural dance interest would bring me back to breaking because no matter how phenomenal you know, or how whatever it is that I might have created through something like choreography or how my, that might have impi impacted somebody or inspired somebody. When you like land a freeze, you just stick the shit out of a freeze and b-boy, you'll like scream for yourself. <laughs> oh, snap. You know, and that's like, it could be undocumented. It's not on a stage. Yeah. It could just be in a random rehearsal. And you just stuck the crap out of something. And I feel like that same euphoria comes from things like, you know, like landing a trick. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like maybe nobody's watching. You're just doing it yourself. But if you hit that, like you were talking about that double flip with the twist, if you were to yeah, do yeah, that yeah. by yourself and nobody watched it, you didn't get paid for it. It still might be one of the most glorious moments in your entire journey. That's why I like parkour because it's nothing, no crazy 20 flip spins. So you're just jumping, right? Nothing's more satisfying in any flipping sport, jumping sport than me hitting a regular jump and sticking a big jump. Like if it's a 10 foot gap, and there's like a five foot drop, like high to low. If I just did a standing jump and I stuck it to the edge of the wall, perfect. No better feeling. Swear to God. That's crazy. I, know I can do a triple flip on grass. Not going to feel I cool. totally know mm. what you're talking about in that same analogy. The only thing I don't know what you're talking about is how the fuck do you even get that if you don't land the trick? Like, what, <laughs> yeah, like, just, there's no messing up. What yeah, is like, messing what, up? Yeah, you can't like? mess up. It's the same as the freeze. You said you have to stick it. Mm. If you stick it, yeah, but if I don't stick it, I'm gonna fall one so, inch to so the ground. So one, one step back is body control. So I won't really do necessarily many things that I know my body control won't handle, and a lot of it is mental. Yeah, none totally. of it's really physical for me. It's majority mental, ninety five percent. I'd say I could probably do almost. I wouldn't say I can do every trick in the world. I'd say if there's like a thousand tricks, I could probably do like nine hundred fifty. Damn. That's Prove it. It's a lot of no, tricks. I'm kidding. I don't have enough room. We can start though. <laughs> start with the front roll. But yeah, yeah it's like it's it's like climbing the ladder, and that's something yeah. I always like. I love doing is just like ladder effects, you know, ladder effects and climbing and climbing and climbing. And how can I climb this ladder and then jump to this ladder and get up this ladder? You know, when they have nothing to do with each other. Like mm. perfect example. The other night, I'm at my uh my one of my best friends Carter's house. Uh, I film YouTube videos with, and he's having this, like, there's this company called Carrot Card. It's like a credit card yeah, thing. Yeah, no Carrot, yeah. Okay, yeah. So you are you friends with the guys, Eric uh, and Will? Will, I know Will. Okay, well, yeah. 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 Great yeah. friends. So, yeah, long story short, they were having this party at Carter's house because they known Carter for, like, quite some time now. And I did one flip, and this dude comes up to me and was like, yo, that was so sick. Can you do it again? I was like, yeah, sure. And, like, I always, like this happens at pretty much every party like you do a flip someone's gonna come out you do a freeze hey can you do that again like it's just the same thing right yeah. so i started talking to this dude we were like chopping it up super cool he's like hey man dude you got instagram i was like yeah yeah of course if you thought that was cool i got way better stuff on here <laughs> luckily i can't i i'm not gonna do it so you can watch it here <laughs> but uh yeah like let's look i like love to connect he's like yeah man i mean I would love to like try to get my body into shape and stuff. I was like, I mean, you don't like you're like out of shape or anything. What like what's your thing? He's like, oh, I just you know I'm always working, so I always I want to find some time to like do some stuff like this. Move around. I was like, yeah, no worries. So he just like put his Instagram in, ate, like 800 followers. Not that that matters. And then like put his phone number in too. And then I was like, sick dude, nice to meet you. And then his friend comes up. His friend's name's Eugene. Uh, the guy I was talking to, his name was Danny. No, Darren. Sorry, Darren. And turns out Darren's the uh, second co-founder of FTX. I had no idea. Oh, and dang. my homie Travis, when I was telling you about earlier, he came up to me, pulled me aside. He's like, yo, you know who that is, right? I was like, nah, bro. He just asked me to do a flip. I was like, who is that? He's like, yo, that's definitely the richest guy here. I was like, all right, <laughs> cool. Like, what's he do? He's like, he's uh, one of the guys from FTX. We should go talk to him more. I was like, oh, he's just chopping up. He wants to come flip soon. I was like, let's go to fucking jam. Let's bring him there. So then we start chopping up and he's like, 
yeah, dude, I got to go to Bahamas next week. Then I got to go uh, sponsor the uh, F1 thing in Miami. And then uh, once I'm back from all that, let's definitely do something. Oh, wait, do y'all want to come out to Miami? Y'all should. And we do something. I'm like, how did this literally start from a backflip? If I works. had a dollar for every person like this I've interacted with from just doing a f- simple flip, it's crazy. It's, and it's just completely like one ladder, just you know, regular sport. And it got leaped over to this and potential collaborations with him in the future. Totally. FTX spark like sponsorships. We're already talking about a hand list of stuff. You know how my brain went off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Off on ideas. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Right there. So yeah. Hey, that that's how the power of networking works. And man. also why I left South Carolina. You can't have that happen in South Carolina. Uh-huh. You're not you're gonna meet what the governor. <laughs> okay okay big whoop right get that it. go flip in santa monica you go meet a billionaire and they want to invest with into your company like yeah that's something crazy like that can just randomly only happen here yeah like, tell everyone yeah man well it, you know in light of just all of that talk right you know this the the concept of like you know trying to figure out life trying to get to that next level it's all kind of in this pursuit of this idea of success um currently for you how would you define success uh i'd say uh success is when you've uh for for me personally it's when you've left a solid footprint in my eyes you can take that with however you want but when you've left a solid footprint doesn't mean you have to hit a certain bank a number you have to own a certain amount of cars or it's not a material thing to me mm-hmm. at all. It's a, it's all here. It's an energy soul thing. Love that, man. Yeah. I- yeah. Impact. Yeah. yeah impact. Actually, it's yeah. funny you say that. I had a friend, uh, he's this billionaire. He's a poker player from Vegas and he's out by Nepal where Mount Everest is right now. I know we're talking about that, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He met this dude, how flipping out a crypto party from this guy named Sean Kelly. I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, he's this big NFT crypto guy out of Vegas. But long story short, invited me to his event, did a flip. Poker guy comes up. Yo, that was so sick, dude, again. Chopped it up with him. End up same thing, kind of like with the FTX guy. Got, yeah. like He wants to link up, do some stuff. But he, he was training to uh, climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Mm-hmm, Did I say mm-hmm. that right? Yeah. yeah. So he just did that recently. And then now he just went to India to go find some magical guru in the mountains. Dr. Strange. <laughs> yes. I haven't seen it I yet. So if that's something to do with it, yeah. I might have to now. <laughs> but he's trying to like seek some deeper wisdom. Yeah. To, like This guru is apparently like a wealthy billionaire in the country of India and just dipped to the caves. And now he just lives there. Now he's going to like seek higher wisdom from the like these guys that's off the hook so i'm like that see like people out here tripping about i don't know the dumbest shit out here i'm like there's people literally going out to caves on the other side of the planet to find people with higher wisdom because yeah that because that i don't even yeah. know dude so that's the level of success right there you got everybody's got to learn a backflip second everybody Start knows how flip. to do backflip. a backflip that's how you network i i will say stay keeping your physical maintained <laughs> keeps your mental sustained oh I that was a one line that. i, I love that. that i love that <laughs> bars baby bars no, that totally makes sense man totally makes sense uh, we like to finish each episode with a lightning round. So we want to toss yeah. some questions at you and then yeah, it's quick lightning fashion. Here we go. Three, two, it. one. Who's your favorite action star? Action star. Uh, Luke Skywalker. That's first. Ooh. I was playing Fortnite earlier. Star Wars. Oh, yeah. But he's fire. Uh, what is the craziest stunt you've ever completed? Uh, completed getting hit by a car because I didn't die. That one <laughs> completed the bad. rotation not quite do, not quite planned but that was the craziest Unplanned, that, craziest yeah, thing yeah okay for a guy who's been everywhere around the world where's somewhere you want to go oh uh, more asia i've only been in japan and south korea not enough need, oh need yeah to go deeper. Asia need to go deeper mm-hmm. bro what is your go-to cheat meal or snack oh uh wait if i'm on the east coast waffle house Ooh, all right. If I'm out here, I mean, I guess in and out. It's pretty simple, but like, I eat Chipotle every day. If that's unhealthy to you, then I love Chipotle. That's love that's why I live off. Of. Okay, okay. <laughs> Who is your biggest inspiration? Biggest inspiration. All right, so we kind of talked on this earlier. I'll make it quick. Store parkour group from Europe, from England. These are the guys. I watched one video, and it, that's all it took. And I'm literally dedicated my literary career now to parkour. That's one video awesome. three years ago. Sick, Store, look them up. The goats. 
Okay. What is the last thing that you binged? What does that mean? Like binged watched or just went ham on? Oh, like what is just like... their YouTube videos. Okay. <laughs> oh my okay. God. I'm on their join page. I pay the extra monthly subscription to see the extra video, bro. I love their stuff, man. They're like, that's amazing. They're real, bro. They're the realest freaking dudes out there, bro. What makes them hella real? Dude, they did, they did a whole movie where they went to Hong Kong, Seoul, and uh, Tokyo. And they went for two and a half months, I believe, and made a whole movie. Just rooftop stuff. Roof culture. That's oh, what it's that's called. that's amazing. Craziest roof jumps building stuff from the red cam you've ever freaking seen. You gotta, you gotta see. Yeah, we were watching you, You've seen the probably, yeah. they've had stuff on the internet, like single clips from it. Viral. Honestly, I'm sometimes more impressed by the camera guy. Cause I'm like, well, the camera's in their mouth. That's how they do it. It's oh. a GoPro. So I have the same set. I bought it because of them. It's Got a bite it. piece, a rubber piece, like a football guard. Bite now, GoPro hangs here. That makes a lot simple. of sense. Simple. It's not. Yeah, people think it's like this just... or their head. No, it's Holy. it's so stable because it's in the mouth. It's like a gimbal. Uh, so your head doesn't is like not shaky. Oh my gosh! That's so sorry, sick. that took so long, but no, 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 no that's great. Yeah, that, that just blew my mind. If you were a superhero, who would you be? Oof, Spider Man. Come on now. That would make sense. Climbing, swinging, yeah, flipping. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. If you had to battle one person in tricking or parkour, who would it be? You know, it's funny. I hate competitions. So I wouldn't really want to battle anyone. But. Okay, who would you want to collab with? He then? said but. He said but. Oh, but. just kidding. Yeah, give us but. the juice. I, li I mean, it would be fun to battle Guthrie, the best guy in the world right now. There you go. I mean, I don't train tricking anymore. He trains it every day, but I can still pretty much do every trick. It just stamina, how it, I would just have to get it back up. But yeah, I think it would be fun because I think last time I, I battled him for like a YouTube video for mine, like a game of trick, uh, I beat him. So oh. I was like, dude, there's no way I beat you, bro. Like you let it win for the youtube video but <laughs> we'll see i mean he literally at any moment can shut me down i could he could not let me score at all for sure Dang. <laughs> yeah what is a dream opportunity for you dream opportunity <sighs> to experience a cashed out blessing a cashed out blessing yes what does that mean so The best way I could sum it up in something how I, like a personal experience that I almost came across long time ago, I invested like a couple hundred bucks, like maybe 400 bucks into Bitcoin 2015 when I was talking with Matt at the time. And it was around like maybe 12 bucks. So I got a bunch deleted my Coinbase app redown it last year, something like that type blessing. But Sick. something that I actually worked for, not uh, like I just, oh, I listen to my friends and oh, yay, so I didn't balling, know this would baby. happen. You balling. I wouldn't say that. I just, yeah. I don't, I, I don't believe in that stuff. That's why I'm very like to the sport that I do. Like, otherwise I would just be like one of those bougie other lame ass people who are in the industry who just don't care about the industry. They're like, well, let's do, do movies and get rich and then fuck off. Like, no. I'm out here getting dirty as hell every day, getting cut up. I don't have any recent cuts on me right now because I've my hands. You can kind of see I like re ripped them recently. I usually yeah. have a ton of like scars and stuff on me. I don't like. So you're in good I don't. Right if now. I know I don't have any cuts on me, I haven't been training hard enough. <laughs> That's I, I like getting down and dirty. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So if I can maintain that and then get blessed again from something, but from my hard work. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. And yeah, it's not like the hard work I did in the past. I would say it's like it, it led up to that happy accident, but who knows? Mm. Who knows, really? What is your proudest moment? Hmm. Honestly, it's not my proudest, but one of mine was deathly setting the cork record. 28, right? No, 17, because I, I beat my own record six times. Oh, damn. Oh, you mean the first like time you set years. the record? So my friend Guthrie had it set, he did 16. And then I did 17, then I did 19, then 22, then 23, then 25, then 28. That was Jeez. the order I went. What the? So the fact that I could just rebeat my own six, seven years maintaining, that was like one of the proudest shits I've ever done. Like I'm the only human on the walk on this earth that held a record of that for that long. Is that like a Guinness book or? No, because you have book? to pay. Oh, okay. You have to pay to be in the book. Yeah, it's so that? freaking. Yeah. That sounds yeah. Don't dumb. get me started, yeah, bro. So, so oh, well, we don't know if it was fake. We have to be there and film it. I'm like, no. 
that's not how this shit works. <laughs> when I'm in the moment, I'm in the moment. I go yeah, like, yeah. that's that. I'm not going to wait for you to get set. All right. Like, no, like that's your loss. You ain't doing it. Get your eyes. You're just watching, right? Just sit there. <laughs> like for real. If I'm is, about to literally is it be... documented, it's on video. You do. Yeah. yeah all of them. Oh, all of the yeah. records. Well, I mean, that's yeah. Good yeah. Enough, yeah. And the first three times I did, my phone's propped up on a water bottle and I was by myself. So Damn, just yeah. hitting world records by self motivation, bro. Yeah, man. Gotta have it. That's dope. What is your biggest fear? Oh, dude, I have a lot of fears. What's the biggest Shh, one? I don't have a biggest. I mean, I I'd say my biggest fear is not the the ability not to be able to move. That would for sure be my biggest. Like fear. Like you woke up paralyzed. Oh yeah, that Damn. would be awful. That would suck. Yeah, yeah, that, that would yeah, suck. That, that, that would suck. Because that's kind of what happened with my knee. Like when that happened, I couldn't move for like, I couldn't. Well, after surgery, it was a full four or five days. I couldn't even get off the couch and roll. Like, it was bad without having at least two people help. And I was like, this sucks. I was like, I'm never getting in this position again. Mm -hmm. So then after that fifth day, I said, I'm not getting any more help, and I forced myself to do everything alone. So literally through the most painful, like even if I blue on my knee horrible wow. pain. jeez after crazy. surgery that's crazy yeah what is something that's on your bucket list oof hit every continent antarctica yeah my friend wants to take me this yeah this year they're trying to do a youtube video last to leave the coldest place on earth <laughs> dang <laughs> wish me luck <laughs> i'm not kidding what what's your superpower uh invincibility <laughs> not really not really uh, <laughs> my superpower is my confidence for sure yeah, but my confidence that. literally it correlates with what i do you know like if i say something i'm gonna do it and yeah. 10 out of 10 times everything i've said is documented not 9 out of 10 literally 10 out of 10 because i don't let anything not get documented yeah yeah in terms right. of like especially i'm thinking more so of my sport obviously yeah, like yeah, yeah. even if i'm doing a prep I've learned don't even don't risk anything not getting documented. Mm -hmm. Just think of all of our parents. Oh yeah, we used to do this back in the day. Oh, you have footage? Oh no. <laughs> Why? I know they had camera. Oh, it's too it was different back then. I know. I, I know. <laughs> I know it's different, but like now I'm phones. saying, like it's now modern day. What's the excuse? Right, 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 you right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. Yeah. So I love it. Um, if you could prescribe something to the world for everyone to do once daily, what would that be? work out in the morning swear to god like i would give some kind of like business thing right now but like or financial but no straight health is wealth health is freaking wealth I, all day for me i don't care how rich you are you can't buy your wealth i mean your health yeah. you can't you can buy the things you need but you just eat it and you don't actually move you're not doing shit it's yeah. just gonna rot in you yeah so you gotta get up and make your body your skeleton move the one thing you're gonna be with the rest of your life make move yeah. People make excuses to make the one thing they're with every day to do movement. Such a shame. I can agree with that. And I, I'm guilty sometimes in the morning. Sometimes mornings I'm like, ah, oh, dang, I can't do it because I make myself at seven every day. But if it's like eight thirty, I'm like, oh, dude, I'm too late. I'm like, no, I'm not. Just because I had a standard for myself at seven doesn't mean I'm too late. Mm -hmm. It's better late than never. You know what I mean? Totally. So, love it, man. Love yeah. it. Um, so Bruce Lee has his famous quote. He talks about the concept of mastery. He said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. What is it that you feel like you've put that 10,000 hours corks. of practice into? That's so funny you said that. There it's you like go. corks. Easy. <laughs> Literally corks. Like, <laughs> and I so say that because that like, yeah. for you, man. <laughs> well, I say that because it's so relevant for me because like, at the end of the day, people, if I do a quirk now, people are like, that's a cool trick. Every freaking standard person will say that, but they don't know the history of that trick. That trick has made me almost half a million dollars. That trick has gotten me on the Ellen show. That trick has gotten me world records. That trick has gotten me national type. There's so many things that one trick, not like a car, but literally just quirk. The single trick quirk. It's got me so much in life. It's unbelievable That's like amazing. actually unbelievable no one know just like someone if they went viral for a backflip and it changed their whole career this is like the trick that changed my career even though I can do way more than that one trick. Yeah, no, I feel it. That's yeah. that's amazing. Like when my friends come see me and they're trickers, they're like, yo, hit, hit 10 corks right now. 
I'm out in the middle of a street or at Target. I'm like, all right, f- 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 bus 10. Like, that's like what my get up was. Like, I just always did 10 no matter what. No matter Sick. what area, always 10. No matter what area. No matter what. So, like, right here, you'd be able to get I would up. run out of room here. <laughs> In this case, I would run out. I, I could barely do one because I would hit this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, okay. yeah. If, if it's, like, in the proper setting. So, we don't go outside again. later. We don't get some. She <laughs> said she's got to get three yeah, to gotta, four content yeah, videos we gotta a day. Minimum, we got to get some content outside. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yo, Bagels, man, uh, dude, first of all, thanks for for stopping in, bro. We appreciate your time. But like, man, just, you know, seeing all the stuff like, yeah, we, we're geeking out on the videos. And obviously, you can't accomplish things like that without putting in the hours and, and putting in that work ethic from the way that you take care of your body, your workout regimen to, you know, diet to your mentality, I think is probably the most important thing because that's what drives all that other stuff. Um but yeah, man, I just, I can totally see that like you are already on your way to become all the things that maybe you're not even so consciously like, yeah, I'm going to become a this or a that, but you have great momentum and uh, do you're inspiring a whole generation. You're innovating in the spaces that you kind of like were introduced to, but now adding elements where it's now becoming evolved and like you're a part of that. You're breaking records. Like... Dude, you're you're doing you're I doing the most, it, man. man. You're doing the most, and <laughs> yeah, man. I feel no- like I'm not doing enough. That's the worst part. <laughs> That's maybe the best part, then. You know what, <laughs> what I mean? Like, I feel like I, I'm not doing enough. I feel like I feel like the people who go the farthest are the ones who are always constantly feeling like they need to do more, right? So, so I gotta surround myself with the better people, bro. I tell myself every day, and all my friends, like, yo, surround yourself with good people, like, it's as good as that. Not because someone does something good for you. That's separate. Totally. Mm, that's yeah. separate. Mm-hmm. That that that's what I call a wolf in the dark. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel that. I, hey man, like yeah, I'm just echoing Bando. Like to even be able to master something like a cork, like that already, like you know, and I don't know, maybe it's the Asianness in this, right? Um, but like some people will uh, spend their entire life on a single discipline, and that's the entire purpose mm-hmm. of it. Whether it be like contributing to their community or village to something as phenomenal as like doing a single move that gets you around the world and changes the generation's perspective on what can be done with the human physical condition like there there's such power to mastering something simple and like i I think we're super honored and privileged to be sitting here with somebody who's not only just holding a world record but like who still has a million things left to do on the table you know thanks man thank you for sharing your time with us hey appreciate it appreciate it how can people follow the journey and uh i mean keep seeing you the ig bro bagels underscore pain and uh my youtube's just bailey pain so my government name sadly but (laughs) (laughs) you're on you're on tiktok you're all over there yeah i mean yeah yeah. tiktok and stuff i mean i i I think instagram's the best cool it's very youtube i know my tiktok's probably one of my bigger ones but Cool. Yeah. I don't believe in TikTok. <laughs> oh, I don't. That's bro. So funny. I don't believe in TikTok. That's a whole that's other conversation. It's a whole nother. We can come yeah. back for that. Yeah, 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 man. We will link again, though. Yeah. I don't yeah, doubt that. We will man. link again, man. So, dude, thank you again for stopping through, bro. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, of course, man. man. Appreciate it. And, uh, folks, thank you guys for tuning in, watching, listening. Um, if you guys are digging what you're hearing here, please hop on to iTunes, leave us that five star rating, write us a review. Make sure you follow us on our socials, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Kinja's Podcast Cast with a K. We're all up on there. We're on Twitter as well. Same handle. And if you guys are digging it, take a screenshot of it. Snap us. Tag us. We'll regram all that and share it to your folks. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. Kinja bang. Yay. Uh, Until next time. We out. Sir.